fact, it reminds me of the uh, the book I mentioned earlier, Man in the Natural World, where the, this author said he had a quote at the end. He was talking about uh, some British thinker who said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really big on thinking that there might be some intrinsic value in nature, but I'm not sure that's really going to motivate me. What's going to motivate me is that that bird is still going to be around to sing. In other words, he, was, he, was, mm. he said, that, that, that inspires mm. me on a very deep spiritual level. What about that approach? Is there any value in that approach to the environment in, in, in a long term, or is that just kind of a romantic notion that, that carries us for a few years? Well, is that more like the practical notion, you know, that you want to leave the world a better place than you found it? You know, clean up after yourself? Is, isn't yeah, the, it basically the something? Breed, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think you two touched on two different issues. One is, aesthetic value of the environment to humans. It, it, it's a certain kind of utilitarian value, you might think of it that way, that definitely we can enjoy nature uh, in ways that go beyond just mining its natural resources for our benefit in some way. Um, we can enjoy its beauty. And, and that somehow, I think, reflects the image of God in us that we have the capacity to do that. Uh, but. Uh, what John started to talk about was leaving something better than the way you found it or, or preserving something for future generations is captured in the idea of, of legacy and um, wanting to leave a good legacy for those who come behind us rather than a poor legacy. And what that raises the, the issue of what kinds of obligations we have towards people of future generations that don't yet exist. All of those fall into a utilitarian broadly and are helpful in many respects, and that really captures this generation's buzzword of sustainability. Sustainability is the idea of let's only use so much of it so that there's something left for somebody else later on. But I think Gary's right that it doesn't go far enough, that we have to recognize intrinsic value, and the virtues can help us deal with that. Uh, there's another party at stake here who cares, and that's the creator. David raised an interesting Chris, point, if I may, that yeah. The naturalistic ethics, whether they're focused on the value of life, a biocentric ethic, the value of ecosystems or whatever, have great difficulty trying to analyze duties uh, to the natural world. How can we have a duty to a species? How can we have a duty to an ecosystem? How can we have a duty to something that's non-existent like a future generation? A theocentric ethic says our duties are to God with respect to our treatment with respect to our legacy, with respect to what we leave. But our duties are to God first, because He's the Creator, and He put us in a position of stewardship, of responsibility for the way we, we deal with, uh, with creation. The analogy would be the, um, the medieval sheriff uh, who was appointed by the king over a particular portion of, of the king's realm. The steward was responsible, or the sheriff was responsible for managing for collecting taxes, but also for defending, for securing the welfare of the people there. But he's responsible to the king uh, for the stewardship that he's over. And that's sort of the picture of our responsibility towards the natural world. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.